Yeah, g'day guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to head off to Cross the Narandra. So it's roughly about an hour from, from us. So we're gonna find a little camp on the river. Um, I've checked out three or four potentially good spots. Um, as you know, this sort of area's had a heap of rain in the last few months. So a lot of these campsites have been um, shut. So we're gonna go across there now. It's uh, a couple of days before New Year. So we're undecided if we're gonna stay there for New Year's or come back here and party on the veranda over here, but I don't know, I think I'd rather be in the van. So this is the first time I've actually towed the van with the new setup. So the new 500 kilo um, springs underneath it and also the airbag man airbag. So I'm interested to see how it goes. Um, I've gone around and I've checked all my measurements. So I does say to have the measurements, sorry about the lighting. So the measurements from your wheel arches to your top of your tire, they recommend between five and a half and six and a half inches. So I've checked mine out. Oh, sorry. The airbag, five and a half to six and a half inches. So the gap between the... Uh, yeah, so the gap between there, I've measured on both sides. We're sitting at roughly 170, so the idea is to check it now, so you know you're running height, and then you chuck your load on, and when that drops, you lift your airbags up to the same height, and it should be between that five and a half, six and a half inches, so. As I said, I'm keen to give this a run. I this first time we've done it. So I've got everything all half set up in the back. Um, you've seen the fridge install. So it's been running for the last couple of days, uh, cooling down the beverages. And everything else is just sort of half sort of thrown in there at the moment with our table and all the bits and pieces. But that's all going to be sorted out in the not in future. Got the travel arm, we're going to give that a run over the weekend or next couple of days. The Jaffle Maker, if you haven't seen the Jaffle Maker, jump back and watch the Jaffle Maker episode. I'm going to give it, going to give the battery system a good run this week. Um, obviously having the fridge going as well, plus the Jaffle Maker, we'll see how much energy or it actually sucks out of the battery. So I'm definitely keen to check that one out. But what I'm gonna do now is I'll go and I'll, I'll back the, the ute in, or hook it up, and um, we'll see how much it drops down. So as I said, there was one, what did I say, it was 170, so 170 on each side. So we'll see how much it drops. Right, so I've hooked it all up. As you can see, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to reverse in. So the next big thing I'm going to get on this is a reverse camera. So we've got a safety dive system set up in the ute here that runs to the back of the caravan. And so it's got two channels. So I'm hoping if I can ring safety dive up and get onto them, I'm hoping they can send me a, a camera that'll just hook into that, touch of the wire, it's just a matter of going between the channels and then I can reverse on. But normally got Ryan to help me, but at the moment I don't have him, he's inside doing what kids do, play iPads and all sort of stuff. So we'll have a quick look at what it's how how much it's dropped. So it was 170, it's now 160, so hasn't gone down a lot. I'll just take it in and show you. Again, excuse the uh, the camera work. I'm sure someone will want to look at it. Alright, so it was 170. We're now looking at 160, so we'll just quickly dart around the other side. Just making sure it's both the same. And that is maybe one mil lower at 159. So I'll get the air compressor out now. I'll uh, charge it up and then I'll pump it back up just just that 10 mils, and then we should be at right optimum height. And then I'll disconnect everything in the shed. I'll run it outside here and I'll put on a bit of flat ground. And um, we'll have a look from a distance and see what it looks like. Right, so I've had a bit of a play around for the last sort of five minutes or so. So I've, I've gone away from the, 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 height, the height of the wheel arch because 
to me when I was pumping it up the caravan was going the other way so it was too high in the middle there so I've just gone to where it's, I've got it I've dropped it all down got it to where it's level so both sides of the airbags are sitting at about 30 psi so this is a setup for my vehicle so it's going to be probably different for yours I'm trying to keep within the uh, manufacturer's specifications so as I said this is the first time I've, I've towed with it all set up so it's going to be a bit of a uh, a bit of a learning curve I guess um, so once I unhitch I'll I reckon I'll probably drop it down maybe 10 psi 15 psi when there's nothing on it because um, obviously once you take the weight off it she's going to lift right up so um, right so we'll pull it out of the shed now and we'll stick it outside there on the flat ground and we'll have a look and see what it looks like but in the shed it looks nice and straight so I'm hoping out there it'll look nice and straight yeah, right. so I thought I'd just come around the other side and, and just double check from a different perspective so it doesn't look too bad as I said before it may be slightly high um, but we'll work on 30 psi to start with um, and then we can always adjust test and adjust so as I said at the start of the episode this is first time I've hooked up the, the caravan of the year so um, it's going to be a bit of hit and miss if you've got any little tips of the trade, certainly let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm keen to know. But yeah, well, as I said, I'll keep it inside the manufacturer's specifications and we'll run with that. Anyway, we'll, um, we'll finish what we're doing here. We're already at half ready. I'm going to get a few things from inside and then we'll load the crew up and um, we'll hit the road and keep rolling. Yeah, morning guys, so we uh, we ended up pulling up at the, the nine mile uh, out of Narendra, so off the five mile, sorry, so it's about nine k's out of Narendra. Um, it's on the eastern side. Uh, we went and checked out a couple of other places. We went and checked out Narendra Beach, but there, it looked like there was only probably two spots there. They're already gone. And then we went for a drive out towards uh, a walk away on the, on the Sturt Highway, and we went out to Button Bong, reserve again that was a little small area uh there was a, a group there already sort of set up camp and there was another one sort of just, just a bit further so it wasn't very many spots the bank was very steep in both places um so we pulled up here probably about 2 30 and naran is back over behind me here and we come around the corner and there was a big group of people down there and there was no one in this little spot where we were and we we're like what's going on here so we're very lucky to get a good spot here and as you've seen in all the all the images so far that the water is literally right there i'll just spin this around excuse the camera work so the water's right there and there's the shallow banks so apparently this is the this area here they use it for skiing but there's not a great deal of room to be skiing in there but anyway i suppose you can Get around the heap of, there's a heap of tree stumps way up here so i'm not too sure how that would go you wouldn't want to be running into one of them and then only go sort of down there to those yellow boys sitting in the water there so well, yeah we spoke to a 
couple next to us last night, and they come here all the time. And that big group of people I just mentioned before, apparently they come here every year for two weeks, so must be a good little spot. They've got a little tent city set up over there. So this area itself is fairly basic, so you've got to be fully self-contained as well, so bring all your own gear in. It's got a drop toilet. I don't know if I can... The green shed over just over here. Um, I don't think it's maintained by the local council or anyone like that, so make sure you bring your own TP. Um, the area itself, so we're right here on the corner. I think we've got the best spot. We've backed ourselves into the into a sort of a corner part here. You know, it's got a big massive blue bin down there. It gets emptied every now and then, I guess. And then a few campers down there, as you can see. So there's definitely enough room here to, you know, you could probably put, say, 10 vans in at, at, at once, I'd imagine. Uh, but anywhere on top of that, you'd probably be a bit overloaded, so... All in all, pretty good. So the phone service here, if you want to be on your phones and iPads all the time, is pretty ordinary. Um, depending where I put my phone, I might be able to pick up one bar of 4G, 5G. Um, but if you go back in towards Narendra, back this way, there's a bit of a hill there. If you go up on top of that hill, if you really need it, you can pick up some phone service then. So uh, it's been pretty good. So we've been catching a fair, fair few fish. Ryan's been catching a heap of carp. Um, there was one pulled in, I thought it was a redfin, but we had a little bit of a, I got a bit of service and I Googled him up and uh, it was a carp. So we've been catching the carp on the worms. Uh, we've tried a bit of cheese. Um, but it's been no good. We do see it every afternoon or even this morning, the little fish jumping out of the water, getting the bugs, so pretty cool. There's a, there's a slight bit of uh, current there, so it's perfect for kids. Declan's been in here swimming around last night, so just hang around the edge here. You're right, if you go out a bit further, you do feel yourself getting dragged a bit. And they do let water in here of a night time, so last night we put a few sticks in the ground just down into the chair. and. It's come up a fair way from those. It's probably come up maybe a metre last night, but this morning it's gone back down. But you can see where it was up to, so. Anyway, I might go and have a bit of brekkie and um, chuck a line in and have a bit of a swim and just have a bit of a chill out. I think that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, not going to be going anywhere, not going to be doing anything. Might go for a bit of a walk. Might go for a bit of a walk down through here, I reckon. See how far we can walk down. Apparently there's a, there's a gate down there where they let, let the water in and out, so. With a bit of luck, we may be able to walk most of the way down there and then we'll also go for a bit of a wander back up the other side and we'll, um, we'll see what's available up there and what's, what's around. I also, there's people here last night, they got kayaks and um, so this would be a perfect little area for those stand-up paddleboards. So if anyone's got a stand-up paddleboard, one of those King's ones, um, and if they're any good, let me know. I'm, I'm sort of half keen on possibly acquiring one. Um, especially for this sort of area, like he'd, last night it was just like glass out here, so not a drop of wind, it was absolutely beautiful. Anyway, I might go and finish up my brekkie and then we'll, we'll work something out what we're going to do. What'd you catch, mate? I uh, caught a. Don't know these fish, but that's a really good fish. They... Cut, no, they're carp, they're mom. Yeah, they're carp. You can't, you can't, <laughs> you can eat carps, but you shouldn't really, because they're really oily. Yeah, probably not the best eating fish, are they? No. But um, red fins, yeah, you can definitely. Yeah, some brim or something like that, or yeah. some flathead, but we're not in the right water for that sort of stuff, are we? Yeah, pretty big fish. Oh, that's a good, that's probably at least 20 centimetres, I reckon. Looks pretty cool. Mm. Right, I'll better load the bait back up and go again, I reckon. Yeah, I hope I catch a different.
All right, so just come for a bit of a walk up the other side. So we're, we're on the other side of the camp city over here, and I've just found these old old dunnies up here. So this one's the blokes. Um, it's an old one, not in use anymore. So it's a perfect thunder box with a view. It's a nice river view as you're embracing nature. And I guess the other one behind here would be the ladies. So I've had a bit of a swim this morning, been doing a bit of fishing. Had a good lunch, beautiful. Should have bloody, probably should have recorded that, but anyway. We'll do it next time, but I'll head down to where the boys are now. They're just in mucking around in the water down there near a little inlet. They're catching a heap of carp. They've caught a couple of buckets of carp, so I'll, I'll head down there and I'll, uh, I'll show you what they've been doing. What's going on here, Decker? Yeah, they're just finding fish and yabbies. Um, yabbies. Yeah, right. But we've mostly caught yellow um, carp. Some carp, yellow belly, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah we're that's what they look like. And oh, the yeah. big ones, they, they, um, they're like the big boys. Nearly got a fish farm up here. Just yeah. a pity it wasn't some good stuff. So we've just walked up to the gate and uh, we can't get in, it's a uh, private property. And the old uh, surveillance camera in the tree. So there must be a, uh, a cord that runs inside the tree and goes down and back up to the house. So the old dodgy pretend camera. But anyway, I won't go in there. Would have been nice to go down there, but anyway, it doesn't matter. It's part of a station, privately owned. Anyway, we've had a little nice little walk. We'll, uh, we'll head back to the uh, caravan and do a bit more swimming. What do you reckon, Ryan? Yeah. What do you reckon, Dagger? Catch some more fish. Catch some more fish. Some Cook up a bit of lunch. Um, what are you having for lunch today, Tim? Well, I've brought some um, English muffins, so and I've got some pizza sauce and gonna chop up some ham and put some cheese might make some little mini pizzas with the kids yeah we'll chuck them in the chuck uh in the, the kick ass 12 volt travel oven give it a run we've also got a jack maker too if you want to have some or some tasties tasty cheese sandwich yeah or something like that we might give that a run actually might be a bit a bit quicker and a bit easier what do you reckon ryan tasty cheese hanger yeah same with you dagger all right, we'll uh, head on back and I'll turn it back on when we're, we're cooking up the old toasty. Right, what do you got for lunch here, Pen? Mm, just little mini pizzas. <laughs> mm, very nice. Yeah. A bit of chopped up ham, ham and cheese. And then for us, a bit of a ham and salami, cheese, pepperoni. Onion barbecue sauce. A bit of onion barbecue sauce, beautiful. Nothing flash, but it'll do the job. And then we'll take it out. Well, we might as well take these ones out now. I'd put pineapple on them, but the kids don't like pineapple. Yeah, no, they're a bit fussy, these kids. So I've had the uh, travel oven going here for probably 15 minutes, I reckon. Probably not that optimal temperature yet, but let's get a bit of warmth in it. We'll just sit that in there now. 
cook it away. So the time now is, well, we're just on 12. So I'll check it again in about 20 minutes and see what it looks like. Right, so we're just on 20 minutes. Just crack it open, have a bit of a look. See what they look, see what they look like. Well, they're just starting to melt. So I reckon give them another 10 minutes in there. The kids have been mucking around playing with carps. I need to go and wash their hands. What do you reckon, Dagger? And this is the uh, the end result. Looks pretty good to me. What do you reckon, Pen? <laughs> They're really good. Are you sure? Mm. Okay, well that's that's the main thing. Five out of five. Five out of five, right up. Well, mine's got all the all the hot salami stuff on mine, so I'm keen to get into it. Yeah, right, guys, so we're just sitting down having a bit of you know, happy hour. Ryan's having his line of length, 45 chocolate uh, chocolate um, scotch finger biscuits. Decker's on his uh, sweet chilli chips. And I'll have some sweet chilli cream cheese spread with a couple of bickies. So, had a really good time here. It's been a really, really good place. You know, the only downside to it at the moment, I reckon, would probably be all the ski boats going on and off all day. But I'm at a really good spot. Kids have enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. So, it's been a really good spot here. So. I'm going to end it here, it's uh, nearly 5 o'clock on New Year's Eve so I'll end it here, there's not much more I can show you, I've showed you everything, I'm going to have a bit of a dip soon, I'll have another couple of beers, I'm on the, uh, the Carlton Mids at the moment, I couldn't bring myself to paying 70 bucks for some Great Northern, so Great Northern if you're watching, bring your prices down. Um, yeah, just want to also just want to thank everyone this year, everyone that that supported us, been part of the channel, it's been really good. Uh, I've got a few, few more reviews coming up soon, um, and we're not too far away from our, our big trip. I haven't announced it yet, so I'm going to announce it right now. We're heading off to uh, WA in March of this coming year, so not too far away. Heading off for six months, so I'm really looking forward to it. Ryan's not really looking forward to it. He reckons he's going to miss his mates at school, which is probably fair enough. So um, we might be able to video diary them, or get on get on FaceTime or something every now and then. You might be able to have a chat with your with your friend or something. So and Deck is starting big school, so he should be pretty excited about that. Now, well, guys, um, yeah, as I said, thanks for the support through 2022 into 2023 next year. So we'll bring it on bigger and better and. We'll hopefully we'll improve out of sight. Anyway guys, talk to you in the uh, next one. Cheers.